Hi, welcome to Quality of Life, Grace Teaching, New Covenant Ministry, and much more to come. Remember, you're the most important person here, because without you we could not teach. And remember, we're all growing in grace here. We're students, and uh, Jesus, of course, is our teacher. And so, as we're learning, we're teaching, and as we're teaching, we're learning. So, um, welcome to Quality of Life um, Ministries. Today, uh, our topic is going to be blasphemy. Um, I wanted to define the word blasphemy, first of all. Um, it's the act or offense of speaking um, about God or sacred things. It's profane talk. He was detained on charges of blasphemy, screaming, blasphemies. Um, <clears throat> it's the act or offense of speaking um, sacrilegiously about God or sacred things. Um, <clears throat> in other words, um, there's, there's only one thing that God does not forgive. And this is it. Blasphemy. And it's really important for us to know what this one thing is. What is blasphemy? Um, see, 1 John 4.10 says this is real love. Now, the, the John is actually um, writing to believers um, in Christ at this time. 1 John 4.10, he says, I'm writing to you. Um, and so he's, he says, this is real love. He's describing, he's writing to the church in Christ what real love is. He says, this is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away all of our sins. Now this is real love, and of course he's writing to believers, as I was just mentioning. Um, but blasphemy is, is one sin that God cannot forget. And so it's important for us to know what that is. Wouldn't you like to know what that one thing is that God does not forget? <clears throat> and so that's what we're going to talk about. Now I'm going to read, uh, our key verse is going to start at Matthew 12, 31. Of course, this is Matthew 12, 31. It says, Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Will not be forgiven. So we've heard that term, blaspheme, when you blaspheme, when you have blaspheme, when, when a person um, blasphemes against the Spirit, that means they will not be forgiven. And what that means is, um, the Holy Spirit is in the process of convicting the world of sin. But the Holy Spirit is actually in the process of convicting believers in Christ of our righteousness in Christ. And so, as the Holy Spirit convicts the world of their sin, um, they continue in their sin and they don't acknowledge Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord, what happens is, we, we all did this before Christ. Personally, I did it for 34 years. I, I blasphemed the, the Spirit of, of God. Um, I, I blasphemed against the Spirit for 34 years. And so, and the Holy Spirit was always convicting me of my sins. I was the ringleader of sinners in my family. And um, so, I mean, I was good at it. I was a good sinner, man. I, you know, I was like a lot of you guys out there, you know. I, I could sin good. <laughs> so I was considered to be the ringleader of sinners. And if anybody blasphemed uh, the Spirit of God, I did. So for 34 years I did. But I came to a place where I was just down, and the Lord found me, because uh, He was never lost. I was. And, uh, and so that's kind of the way it started. Back at 34 years old, um, He drew a staircase and said, we're going to go up together. And so he's going to take me up from the age of 34 up. So, But before Christ, I was blaspheming the Spirit all the time. And what I was doing is just rejecting Jesus Christ. I was rejecting the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's really what blaspheme is. And if a person does that their whole life and they just keep doing that, then what happens is... Um, that keeps God, you know, the person who actually does this. Basically what I was doing is I was saying, no, I'm God of my own life, and God, your history, 
That's basically what I was saying. And so, of course, I didn't know my spiritual condition. Um, you know, Romans 5.12 says, We entered into this world sinners and spiritually dead. That means we're separated from God. And so we needed to be born again. John 3.3, uh, 3, Jesus spoke about this. He said, Unless a man is born again, he can never enter into the kingdom of God. And so, of course, we didn't know our spiritual condition. We didn't know that when Adam and Eve uh, spiritually died and were separated from God in the Garden of Eden and kicked out of the Garden of Eden, we didn't know that we all entered into the world in the same condition they were in when they left the Garden. We didn't know that. We didn't know anything about Romans 5.19 that says, because of the disobedience of the one man, Adam, and Eve, <clears throat> everyone enters into the world sinners. Sinners means separated from God. Immediately that was a sign and, uh, respect, just because this was a serious... So, excuse me there. But yeah, so we're going to talk about blaspheme. And so when we uh, received John 1, 12, yet to all who have received him and believed in his name, Jesus Christ, as personal Savior and Lord, God has given us the right to be called his children now. And so if you have um, received him and believed in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you have not committed this. This is for people that have continuously rejected the finished work of Jesus Christ, the finality of the cross, and uh, the born-again experience. Um, unbelief in Jesus is the only sin that remains. Um, there's only one that remains, and that's it. Um, rejecting the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is blaspheming the Spirit. Because the Spirit's going to come to the world and convict the world of their sin. And the reason for that is to to respond to Jesus Christ. Now John 6, 28 and 29, the disciples are sitting down and uh, they're speaking um, with Jesus. Jesus and the disciples are at a table like this and uh, they ask Jesus, they say, Jesus, so we want to do uh, the works of God as well. Um, what shall we do? And Jesus responded and he said to them, he said, the works for you the works that I have for you, or that God has for you, is to believe in the one that he sent. And so that was the work, is just to believe. And uh, so when we went from unbelief to belief in Jesus Christ, we went from blaspheming the Holy Spirit, blaspheming the Spirit of God, to uh, we were given that right to be called his children. And we were born again. So that's comforting. <laughs> if if you know, I'm, hopefully I'm speaking to born-again Christians here. Um, so, um, but many of us did blaspheme the Spirit of God. And so many of you will, you will probably be able to relate to my story there. Um, but we're, uh, we're not all unique in that area. We've all done that. But, um, so once we're in Christ, um, always in Christ... And so, once a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ, always a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ. This is not going to be determined on physical performance or behavior. Although, when we understand how loved we are by our Heavenly Father and who we are in Christ, we will just be ourselves. And we'll see that sin and sinning is actually pretty stupid. Um, but uh, we're not talking about that sinning. We're, we're actually... Um, and we're definitely not, as grace believers, we're not giving anybody a license to sin. We're, we're saying the grace of God is the power to live and uh, live out of that, this identity. So that's where we want to go. We want to know who we are in Christ, and we want to live out of that identity here on, in the earth. And so, But, you know, what's going to give us peace with God is knowing that we're always in right standing with Him. And so that's where we want to, you know, there, there's a lot of freedom in that. There's a lot of freedom in knowing that our Heavenly Father, when He sees us now as believers in Christ, born again, that we're always in right standing with Him and we're always loved unconditionally by Him. And so He's given us the Holy Spirit in us to renew our mind so we can be transformed to that truth and so that it'll go from knowledge to experience and we can just walk that out every day. And there's a lot of freedom in that. Romans 5, 1, there, Therefore, since we have been declared right, by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So be encouraged. Um, we uh, are here for the body of Christ, to edify and build up the body of Christ. 
with Scripture. We know Scripture, or the whole focal point of Scripture is that it's going to point us to Jesus Christ, not us. Because, uh, you know, a lot of times I'll just say things that are wrong. And we believe every teacher and pastor will say things and do things that are just wrong. Um, because Jesus doesn't want us to follow a person. He wants us to follow him. So keep your eyes on Jesus and we'll do the same. And uh, we'll just trust his spirit to lead us and guide us today. Um, have a great day. Thank you. And uh, God bless from Quality of Life Ministries. I was a highwayman